feel like I'm eating the cherries. Like if I close my eyes and I drink this, I could see myself sitting on a hillside in Yemen just eating the cherries. Hello and welcome to Coffee Lovers TV. On the show today, I am very excited to bring to you coffee from the Port of Mocha. I could easily talk for hours and hours and hours about Yemen and Yemen's coffee and the work of Port of Mocha, the company of Mokhtar al Uh I've spoken of his work before. We've had him in the magazine. His story is absolutely fantastic, and I don't need to go into it here because it's been shared everywhere. Uh, and Dave Eggers has written a book about his story called The Monk of Mocha. I'm gonna link to that below. I'm gonna link to where you can download uh, the very first issue uh, where we featured Mokhtar's story. That was in January 2015. Read about the beginnings of, of Mokhtar's journey. There you can read about it in the book. I don't need to go into it. This is about the coffee. Port of Mocha is a producer Essentially, they work with farmers in Yemen uh, to help them increase the quality of their coffee, bring it up to specialty quality level, and share it with the rest of the world. And their coffees have been rated as some of the highest in the world. In fact, last year they had one uh, rated by Coffee Review at a 97. The point is they're doing really fantastic work. They've also started a subscription service so that you can just buy coffee directly from them. Uh, until now, most of the places you can get the coffee uh, were from a very select few roasters, including Blue Bottle down in San Francisco, Slate up here in Seattle. Uh, but now you can get coffee directly from Porto Mocha. I'm going to link to them below. Um, so they're doing the subscription service, and this is the first box. Uh, I have opened the box, but I have not opened the coffee. I wanted to wait to do it on uh, on the show here, but I'm gonna I'm gonna reopen the box and share with you what I I discovered so far. And then, of course, I'm gonna smell the coffee, and then we'll get into brewing it. I'm gonna be brewing it on a V60, uh, and then and we're gonna see what it tastes. I haven't had this coffee yet. Uh, I did I did have the privilege of having some Yemen coffee from the Port of Mocha, a different coffee, uh, when they were visiting, uh, Mokhtar and Dave Eggers were doing a book tour for the Mocha Mocha, and they were in Seattle last weekend uh, at the La Marzocco Cafe at KEXP here in Seattle, uh, and, and they had some of the Al uh coffee available. Uh, and I had a cup of that, and it was, it was, I mean, it's, it's really hard. You're going to see me struggling with <laughs> describing coffee from Yemen because it's, it's so challenging to put to words how different and much more magical, I guess, it is than, than other coffees. Uh, Craig Holt of Atlas used the word lush. Uh, as he was describing it, and uh, that word is so uh, descriptive to me of how I feel about the coffee that I'm probably, almost definitely, absolutely going to be using it. Thank you, Craig. <laughs> All right, let's open it up. So in here, I actually have this a little backwards because I took things apart. Uh, the first thing you see is this really nice packaging, and then there's some cards and stuff underneath, a nice uh, thank you card from them. And then, I'll put this back together really quick. This was at the bottom. And uh, it's, it's this nice craft paper with a wax seal sort of letter thing, which is, which is really cool. I didn't want to break the wax seal, so I cut it open because I just couldn't wait. And inside here, uh, some nice brewing instructions. They actually give you Kalita Wave, V60, Chemex, French Press, and AeroPress instructions. Uh, it's, actually, it's actually a lot of information crammed in here, uh, which is really helpful to get you uh, brewing this coffee at its best quickly. Uh, and then, you get this nice sort of story sharing of Port of Mocha. Uh, they talk about the Mocha method, which um, through our Mocha method, we work on the ground with farmers on elevating coffee to the highest quality while improving quality of life for coffee farmers. Uh, and their measures include education, microloans, water conservation, gender equity, um, and paying coffee farmers a much, much, much higher price. Uh, as they say, the highest price in the world. Uh, and and the, the Porto Mocha coffees are not inexpensive. They, you're gonna, you might look at them and go, that's a really expensive for a cup of coffee. But I, what I would encourage you to do is look at them and go, oh, that's what coffee really should cost. As Mokhtar likes to talk about the value chain of coffee instead of the supply chains, the value chain, because everyone along the way, and you might have 20, 30 people involved 
uh, in, who've had their hands on the coffee that you are enjoying in your cup, if, if you're paying cheaply for coffee, then someone there is losing out. And it's only when you pay this higher price where everyone actually is, is receiving what they really deserve for the work that they're doing. On to the coffee before I continue preaching. I have this lovely packaging. This is kind of a, a sort of leaflet thing wrapped around the bag, which has this nice card. And then from Yemen, the birthplace of coffee begins our journey across mountains, valleys, and oceans to support farmers producing the world's most transcendent coffees. Enjoy. Their logo icon is, of course, inspired by Mokhtar's journey, which you can read about in the book linked below. All right, and here we go. This wonderful bag of Yemen coffee. And this card shares a bit about it. Like I said, this is a subscription box, so this is the coffee that went out in February. For the first month of Mocha Monthly, we've chosen a lot that is quite literally a perfect representation of the Al Jamal region. This lot started as an experiment last harvest, where our team and the entire community of smallholder farmers went out to pick coffee cherries together, the communal picking inspiring higher quality standards and morale. When the experiment began winning awards, we knew we had to expand that production. Extremely clean, sweet and subtle for a natural, with, lot, with notes of hibiscus and red grape sweetness, this lot elegantly displays the incredible character of the Al Jabal region. Uh, so all the coffees in Yemen are naturally processed because you just can't, you can't wash process coffee there. Like there's not enough water and it's such a waste of water to do that anyways. Um, so all the coffees in Yemen are naturally processed or as they say, sun-dried natural. Uh, the cultivar is Udaini. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. And they, they uh, label it as ancient typica. So this is... Just a brief history lesson. Most of the coffee in the world that you uh, are familiar with, it was originally from a few seedlings from Yemen. So those went out and then everything produced. So most of the coffee comes from probably one or two uh, varieties of coffee in Yemen uh, and probably related to this one. I'm assuming just from their language here. All right, let me open this up. I've been dying to smell and drink this coffee since I got this, I should just put it off because I want to do it on the video. Mm. Mm. It's interesting. It's, it's, it's reminiscent to me of, um, gosh, it's like, it's like a super rich and fruity Central American coffee. So as the, uh, as the coffee is just starting to the aroma's starting to waft out of the bag more. It's like turned so like super sweet fruit, like sugary melon, maybe some like pineapple. It's so, I'm gonna steal the word lush and I'm gonna use it over and over again. Nothing smells this sugary, fruity, and like fresh, like fresh fruitiness. Like nothing smells like this in coffee. Mmm, that is also good. Okay, um, <laughs> I need to, I really, really need to brew this up. Uh, I'm like super dying to try it out. So uh, I'm going to brew it up in the V60 and then come back uh, after it's brewed and then we'll have a taste and um, see how it is. All right, we're back. We have this Yemen brewed up on the V60, the Al Jabal. Ooh. God, I want to say it smells like Christmas. That's not, that's not Christmas anymore. It's got like a, it's got a cinnamoniness to it though. And like a, oh, there's a fun spice on this and like a fruity sort of cideriness to it. Rich and, oh, wait, what was that? What was that? Hello. What am I smelling? There's so much sugar on the aroma. I love it. Mm. I love how much fruit sweetness uh, Yemen coffees have and that uh, I mean that's owing to you of course have to account for the variety they have Unique varieties there, but the way that that um, Coffee grows in Yemen is is unlike anywhere else in the world just because of the of the environment of the altitude of the uh, harsh conditions the lack of water Mokhtar was telling us at one of the talks that there are plants and there are coffee plants in Yemen that have adapted so much to the environment that much much of the time throughout the year There will be no leaves on them 
because there's, there's not much water to support all of that growth. And so they'll just look like sticks in the ground. And then when, it, when, it's, when it's just the right time, the leaves will start to grow, the flowers will bloom, the cherries will come out, and it'll all happen just, it'll be like an explosion of coffee. It's really intriguing. I wish I, wish I, could, um, wish I could see that. This is so, so rich and sweet, it's hard to describe or liken this to, to anything. I could easily point to their tasting notes, hibiscus and red grape, yeah. Absolutely, uh, but the the hallmark to me is just how it's like de it's like densely rich. Like, if you uh, uh, chocolate is not one of the flavors, but I'm gonna get into chocolate here just so I can try to communicate. So think about like a typical chocolate brownie, and it's kind of cakey and whatnot. But then think about a fudge brownie, where it's just it's it's so dense and chewy and rich. That's like. This is the f the rich, dense fudge brownie of coffees. <laughs> mm -hmm. I probably need to slow down and think about it. It's interesting, they, they say extremely clean, sweet, and subtle for a natural, which now I, I, I understand more what they're saying about that. It's like naturally processed coffees usually have a uh, a particular flavor that's really upfront. If you think about, you may have had from Ethiopia a coffee that tastes really strongly of blueberries. That's a popular one. Uh, strawberries is another. We've got a natural uh, El Salvador in the box this month, and that one is really strongly of chocolate and cherries. Like there's these distinct flavors that are really, really strong. The, the flavor strength of this is in that rich sweetness, but the distinct flavors are much more subtle, which is probably why I'm sitting here trying to be like, what does this taste like? I don't know, there's, there's the dense, rich sweetness to it. There's a fruitiness. If I slow down and think about it, I can see the hibiscus. I can see the red grape. I could, I could see melon as well in there. I'm gonna sit here for a moment and, and let it cool and then see what, see what I can see. I think one of the things I'm really loving about this coffee is the, the incredible lack of, of bitterness. There's kind of an, I mean, there's definitely a natural bitterness that you find in coffee. Uh, and that's almost certainly just the caffeine. Like I think if you decafed this, it would be weirdly like fruit juice, but that's, that's a, that's a, maybe a bit of a wild assumption. But yeah, the hibiscus really comes out as it cools and becomes like a really, really sweet, uh, dense tea actually. That is incredibly pleasant. Uh, silky smooth, as they say. I mean, I'm, I'm not sure I can really add much to the, uh, to the descriptions there. Um, but the, I mean, aside from the, from the subtle notes, the subtle flavors of the hibiscus, the red grape, the, the part that sticks out to me is the, the rich density of, of uh, sweetness in this. People have uh, often asked me what my favorite coffee in the world is, and um, it's always difficult to choose because there's so many great coffees, but uh, it's easy now that I've had the opportunity to have, have many coffees from Yemen to say that, that were I to name one, it would be from Yemen. All right, I could sit here and keep talking about it. So smooth and sweet, and uh, I'm really intrigued by the, by the cleanness and, and how subtle the flavors are for a natural. That's, um, that's pretty delightful. This has been uh, the Port of Mocha's first monthly subscription box, February 2018. I will link below the video to where you can get your hands on Port of Mocha's coffee. Subscribe to their, to their monthly box. Get your hands on some really good coffee. And like, seriously, it is absolutely worth it. Just, just do it. Just do it and find out um, what this experience is like, and then really contribute to um, some really good stuff that's going on in the world. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.